Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. It is Food for Thought Friday and uh, always look forward to sharing some things that God has spoken to me throughout the week, whether it's through my quiet time, reading my Bible, or uh, through a devotional book that I'm reading. Uh, maybe it's through a conversation with somebody. Uh, it could be something that I read even on social media. I love how God loves to speak to us. Uh, it might be a radio program or podcast that uh, I listen to, like you're listening to, but I love that God loves to speak to his kids, and he has so many different ways that he can do it now. And so today I want to start off sharing uh, something I read earlier this week. Uh, my good friend Yusef Mason uh, posted this, and uh, I just thought, you know, somebody needs to hear this on Food for Thought Friday. And he posted, speak life over people, remind them of who they are, pray over them, empower them, give them grace when they need it, be a voice God uses in their life today. In a world where the enemy is constantly speaking lies, choose to speak life over them. Friends, I know somebody listening today or watching on our YouTube channel, you needed to hear that. Uh, I want to speak life over you today. I want to remind you of who you are in Christ Jesus. And I I, I just want to pray over you. Uh, I just, uh, in fact, I'm going to do it right now. Lord, I just want to lift up each person that's listening on the radio or on a podcast or watching on our YouTube channel and that they would know beyond a shadow of a doubt how much you love them. Uh, some, Lord, are just hanging on by a thread today, and I want to pray for encouragement for them. I want to pray that you would put angels around them to bless them, to help them, and to give them hope. God, I want to pray you would just show up uh, for those that just a uh, they said, you know, man, I just I feel like life is hopeless, that you would just show up in a way today, whether it's through this prayer we're doing right now or through somebody else or something that happens today that would just let them know that you are still on the throne, that you know that they are alive, that you love them and that you are for them. I also want to pray for those that are listening or watching that maybe you just thought of a person that you have been meaning to reach out and uh, make a personal phone call would be awesome, but at least to take 15 seconds and to text this person and say, hey, I'm thinking about you, uh, I love you, and I want you to know that God loves you. And so if all the people listening or watching did that to one person, think about just the amount of hope that could be spread today. So, Father, thank you that you hear these prayers. Thank you that you love us. Thank you that you are for us, uh, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, and it's in his name I pray. Amen. Something else that really uh, spoke to me this week was uh, good old Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, Somebody posted this verse, and, uh, man, it's just one of those that I've read it, but one time when I read it, I thought, wow. I did not realize this one word was in this one verse three different times. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plants I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plants to prosper you and not to harm you. Plants to give you a future and a hope. Friends, I love that God says, Hey, I've got a plan for your one and only life. And he wants to make sure, because I'm a little slow sometimes, I get distracted easily. I'm thinking about my to-do list and what I've got to do next and checking the boxes. And yet God said, Greg, I know sometimes you don't focus, so I want to help you focus. So I'm going to put the word plans, not once, not twice, but three times in this one verse. And uh, man, I've written that out before. And uh, the thing I love about the Bible, it's God's love letter, friends, to you and to me. From Genesis to Revelation, from the first book in the Bible to the last book in the Bible, it is God's love letter as he pursues a personal relationship with you and with me. And one of the things I love is that you can personalize it even by taking a scripture like Jeremiah 29, 11 and putting in your own name where like the word is you in Jeremiah 29, 11. For instance, I could say, for I know the plans I have for Greg declares the Lord. They are plans to prosper Greg and not to harm Greg, plans to give Greg a future and a hope. And I've written that before out, and I put it on a post-it note in my bathroom mirror, on my refrigerator, on the dashboard of my car, on my laptop. I mean, friends, I need to be reminded sometimes that God has a plan for my one and only life. 
because sometimes we start playing that compare game. We talked about that earlier this week on our Monday and Tuesday's programs a little bit, and I talk about it often because I think that's what gets us confused and discouraged so often is we try to live out somebody else's plan for their life. And I want to remind you again that everybody's dealing with something. Don't think just because somebody looks like their life's going great on social media that everything is perfect. I know that I know that I know after over 50 years of life that everybody's dealing with something. And yet, I want you to know that there is a God-sized shaped hole in all of our hearts that only God and my personal relationship with Jesus can fill. And so know that today and just ask God, what is your plan for my life today? I mean, sometimes I want to know what it's going to be 20 years from now. And yet, uh, I want to remind you, the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Then say next week's bread, next month's bread, next year's bread, next decade's bread. <laughs> Give us today our daily bread. So friends, stand on that promise today in Jeremiah 29, 11, that God's got a plan for your one and only life, but it may be completely different from another family member, your closest friend, your coworker, your neighbor, and just trust God and just ask him to show you what his plan is for you today and how you can be involved in what he's doing. It's all this quote somebody posted, uh, said, a wise man said, worrying does not take away tomorrow's trouble, but it takes away today's peace. <laughs> wow, I love that. Worrying does not take away tomorrow's troubles, but it does take away today's peace. Uh, that one stung me a little bit, friends, because I think about all the moments, hours, days, months, probably even years that... Uh, I've let the enemy take out of my life because of worrying and fear and doubt. And so I just want to encourage you today, if there's something that you're worrying about and it's overwhelming you, that uh, you would just say, you know what, God, I trust you, and just give it to him and lay it at the foot of the cross. I saw this quote by Albert Einstein. It says, stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. Oh, that's great. I want to share it one more time. Stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. And, you know, uh, we all know somebody like that, and somebody's face and my name came to mind when I read that. But I also got to be honest with you, maybe that's who you are right now. And I've been guilty of getting negative in my spirit and with my words. And the Bible says what comes out of the mouth comes from our hearts. And, you know, I had to go to a cardiologist one time and get a checkup. Uh, thought I was having some issues, but thankfully, uh, tests were run. Everything was good to go. I uh, just need to lose a few pounds. So uh, thankful that that was good. But the fact of the matter is, uh, friends, your physical heart might be good, but maybe your emotional and mental heart. And I know you're like, well, Greg, that doesn't make sense. But what I'm saying is, is that, if the words come out of your heart, are, you know, which says that's what your mouth, it flows from the overflow of your heart, are negative and critical, then, uh, man, you got, you got a heart issue. And so I just want to encourage you. Maybe uh, you, you can ask God to show you, hey, am I, am I being negative or critical? Um, we, I can tell when I get that way. Uh, or I ask a trusted friend or family member or coworker. So... I know that I know, friends, that uh, sometimes we all have to kind of take a look inward. And we, you know, we're looking at other people's shortcomings and their challenges. And yet, uh, I think the main thing is we just need to look inside our own heart and our own lives and see how we can grow and improve that. I love this quote by Mother Teresa. She said many years ago, she said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Wow. So powerful by such a... Uh, physically, uh, you know, uh, I'm not the right word, a, a woman that did not have great physical stature, I'll say it that way, Mother Teresa, uh, you know, not very tall, uh, worked in the, just with the poorest of the poor, but her life, even though small physically in stature, spoke volumes, uh, just had a massive impact that we still talk about it today. And I think we all want to make a difference with our one and only lives. And yet, friends, I think that uh, sometimes we just need to win at home. And we need to just go love our family. 
and just love those people closest to us. And that's how we can make a lot of ripples, friends, instead of trying to change everybody else. Let's just love our family and help them to love others and see what kind of difference it makes. First John chapter 4, 19 says, We love because God first loved us. Friends, you can't love others till you know how much God loves you. And maybe today you're struggling with knowing that. Maybe you're dealing with rejection, emptiness, hopelessness, discouragement, financial challenges, physical health challenges, mental and emotional wounds. And yet, friends, I want you to know today, it's simple, but it's powerful. It's a game changer to know that God loves you. And friends, he loves you, not where you could be, not where you even maybe should be, not where you even thought you would be at this season of your life, but he loves you exactly where you're at today. And he just wants you to know that he's not just your savior, where you can go to heaven one day when you take your last breath and complete your journey on this earth. But you know what? He is hope for today. And he is going to walk with you. And he is going to turn your mess into a message. And he's going to turn this test into your testimony. And that your scars someday will become someone else's stars. And you know the good news about scars, right? Is that means that you survived. <laughs> oh, man. I uh, had my ACL, tore my ACL. Uh, hard to believe now. It's been th over 30 years uh, back when I was a young whippersnapper. <laughs> But I've still got a pretty good gash uh, there, a wound, a scar on my knee. But you know what? I've been very blessed. Uh, Dr. Ben Kibler did my surgery at Lexington Clinic, great orthopedic surgeon, also a strong man of God. And uh, he did a phenomenal job, and I've been blessed. I've never had an issue, zero, out of it. In fact, uh, that, that knee and that leg actually works better than the one that uh, wasn't operated on. So, friends, God can do those type of things. And he will bless you. I heard uh, about a, a lady here in Lexington, uh, Tiffany Michelle Brown. Uh, she gave a powerful talk at First Baptist Bracktown's family conference recently. Uh, and she actually taught a, a, a section, a breakout session on being single. And she is single herself, so she could speak from experience and from the heart. And she uh, put five things that she shared, and I just want to share those because uh, I know there's people, 46% uh, of our population is single, either single by choice, never married, or uh, by unfortunately divorced like me, or uh, widowed. So one out of two people, friends, is either one in if you're at Kroger, either the person in front of you or behind you is probably in that 46%. The five things she shared about being single. One, singleness is a gift from God. Number two, God should be the foundation of any relationship we're in. Number three, set healthy boundaries and don't compromise your standards. Number four, it's okay to pour into yourself, which is one I really struggle with. And number five, just focus on pleasing God today. So I want to encourage you, friends, to just uh, know that, that just because you're single, Jesus was single. I want to remind you of that, okay? And so we have Jesus. If you're a follower of Jesus, you're accepting. You have Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. You have the Trinity. So know that you're not alone today and that God is with you and invite him to be a part of your day and know that there's always hope because of Jesus. You've been blessed by this program. I hope you'll share it with somebody. Hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. Join us again next week. My name's Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.